Well, South Africans are now paying more value-added tax than before. The increase from 14 to 15 percent came into effect on Sunday. Senior tax consultant Patrick Emmett has some important advice to help companies navigate the VAT increase. He joins us now. Patrick, welcome into studio. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you what, what sort of shift needs to take place among companies to figure in this increased VAT rate? I think for me it's about compliance and knowing um, your systems. Um, there has been no real change at all in, in the VAT law. It's just a, a percentage increase. And I think the last time we saw a VAT increase was in 1994. Um, and it, it, it has led to people almost being complacent. So we're seeing the need for, for companies to look at, especially your time of supply rules, because I think that, that is the key part in determining the rate of, of, of VAT to be, be levied. Even now, after 1 April, there are circumstances where VAT of 14% can still come into play. So we are, we are seeing taxpayers having a very short window of, of opportunity to understand this change, but at the same time, just understand the laws that have always been there to implement them properly. Is there a grace period uh, at all, Patrick, or is it simply f as of Sunday you should be, be invoicing for 15% VAT? Well, it all depends um, on the time of supply, as I mentioned. I think that is, that is the critical component here. You, you need to look at um, when the transaction actually happens. So if a transaction has happened um, prior to 1 April, then VAT at 14% should apply. Um, there are instances where the transaction date in terms of the VAT Act is deemed to, deemed to happen post 1 April in terms of our time of supply rules, which, could, which is normally the earlier of an invoice or payment of any consideration being received. But in certain cases, services may have been rendered prior to 1 April, you see. And, and um, there's a spe specific section in the VAT Act that allows for taxpayers to say, well, we've rendered these services pre-1 April, but although our invoice will only be issued after 1 April, we can still account for 14% VAT uh, when we issue our invoice post-1 April. And the same if you have an instance where you have supplies both before a, um, 1 April and on or after 1 April. And there are specific rules about that and, and um, utilising those rules to charge the correct amount of VAT. Uh, there's one warning that's come through for, for companies regarding the updating of their software, their tax software. How important will that be, particularly for larger businesses? It's, it's crucial for, for any, any business, actually. Um, I think more crucial for the, the small, smaller players out there, because they'll probably feel the knock even more. SARS have been uh, very um, strict with, with the application of the rule. And they're saying if you haven't updated your system, well, then you need to do a manual reconciliation and make sure that um, you pay over 15%. So even though you may have invoiced your, your customers at 14% incorrectly, because you haven't got your systems um, up to date yet, you need to do a manual reconciliation for your, for your next VAT return and pay over the 15%. And if you don't, SARS could come and hit you with penalties and interest. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's crucial. In terms of the consumer, him or herself, what, what sort of adjustment do we need to make in terms of what an increased VAT rate will mean for us? I think for me it depends on the consumer um, and I think that's where the, the, this increase in the VAT has, has really had an effect, especially on the poor. Um, you've seen the more um, wealthier um, taxpayers or consumers out there, a 1% increase in the VAT rate is less than a 1% increase in the price. Um, as Zerlin Zima Vavi said over the weekend, it's a 7% increase in the VAT rate. Yeah. Um, and a less than 1% increase in price won't really affect the, the higher end um, consumers. But it's the poor that really are affected by it. Um, and we're really seeing that really struggling to make ends meet. Um, and, and the direct increase on, on the increase in, in foodstuffs, we've got the basic um, zero rating of some um, basic foodstuffs, but it's not everything. Um, and then also the indirect increase, and I think a lot of people haven't really thought of that. Um, if you look at our, our certain supplies that are made that are exempt, for instance, transport is a, a critical one. The transport of a fair paying passenger by road or rail is exempt. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, the, that bus um, company won't charge VAT on their ticket sales, but at the same time, at being making exempt supplies, they're not able to claim any input VAT, you see. So any cost that they bear, which is inclusive of VAT, they will automatically pass that on to the consumer. So the majority of our um, uh, population using public transport are again in the lower to middle er income earning category. And they are going to be affected again by this indirect increase. And we're seeing the fuel levy going up as well now. 
um, and the fuel price increase with the, the RAND. So there's this quite a, a knock-on effect. So I think my advice is just for those that can budget better, um, save a bit more potentially. Um, but yeah, I think my, my real heart goes out to the poor um, because of this, this increase and the effect that it will have on them going forward. Definitely. Let's hope this panel looking into the zero rated basket will come up with some useful suggestions. Thank you for talking to us. Tax consultant Patrick Emmett with us.